Hey, Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angles production of VMworld 2013. We've been here, this is day three. This is our fourth VMworld show. I'm here with Stu Miniman, my co-host, and we've got a segment with Williams and Fudge. Philip Reynolds is here, and Phillips is in the IT organization, practitioner, Philip, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, great to be here. So tell us a little bit about Williams and Fudge. We are an accounts receivable management firm, so we work for about 1,300 colleges, universities, and private financial institutions. We have about 400 employees, and around 320, 330 of those are actually in our call center. Okay, so focused on that vertical. Obviously, you got a lot of expertise there. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, well, first, before we get into the IT environment, what's driving your business? What kind of changes, what kind of pressures is management and the line of business putting on you? So as the environment's changing in our industry, we're having to work the business harder and work our staff harder um, and work then IT harder to be able to make the same uh, you know, return that we were a few years ago. So as our business is growing, we're also having to do everything that we've been doing uh, a little bit more economical. Okay, so talk a little bit about your environment. Obviously you're a VMware customer, right? We are, yeah. We is this, is this our, your 10th VMworld? Or? No, this is <laughs> VMworld number four, I believe. <laughs> so we actually are located in a 150-year-old cotton factory in uh, South Carolina, and so that presents some challenges in and of itself with the uh, disaster recovery aspect and the risks there. So our data center is there in that building, and we've got um, a VMware cluster for uh, our servers. We've got about 60 uh, servers, and then we've got a uh, VMware cluster for our view desktops and that's all backed by an EMC uh, VNX array um, with Cisco UCS as the compute platform. Okay, um, so what was the driver? Were you there when you guys moved to the virtualization? I was, yeah. yeah. Four so years ago, we woke up one day and said, hey, we have no disaster recovery, but at the same time, we also have 12 physical boxes in the corner of the server room. So uh, what are we going to do to do this economically and consolidate, really? So that's when virtualization really you know, stuck out. And we adopted a disaster recovery plan out of that as well by putting some, uh, the same equipment at a DR facility. Saw that with a lot of customers, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they had no DR, and then VMware enabled DR. Right. And, and, uh, and so I, I presume you're, you continue to, to push that capability further and further, but um, before we go there, so pre predominantly virtualized now, is that right? Yeah, every mission critical application that we have, and actually that's every server now, is actually virtualized, except for our phone system. Everything's completely virtualized. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Phil, Phil, if you said that you're doing desktop virtualization in we addition are. to server virtualization, can you tell us, you know, what did you learn, server virtualization, desktop virtualization, how did that rollout happen, and what, what did you learn? Well, we saw a lot of the aspects of server virtualization could carry over into the desktop space, as we saw desktops being, the, you know, have the need for retirement. So I've talked about four years ago is when we started this transition. And so we had 160 employees at the time. Now we've got 400. And so by virtualizing our desktops, it allowed us to grow at a high, higher rate than I think it would without, without virtualizing our desktops. And we also didn't add any IT staff. Okay, so I know you said you have a call center. Is part of it, is only the call center virtualized or is, uh, are all your desktops virtualized? We're currently on the path to virtualize all of our desktops, but right now our sales force and client support uh, area is virtual and about 60% of the call center is virtualized as well. Okay, so now talk a little bit about um, when you talked about your DR plan. I wonder if we could dig into that a little bit. So I think you guys are using RecoverPoint as we part are. of that. Is that. How do you use uh, RecoverPoint? Is it, is it, that's how you determine what the, what the RPO is going to be and, mm -hmm. and you're getting data off site? So talk about the, the, from a business standpoint, Let's start with the business impact analysis, the RPO and the RTO. Did you go through an analysis of that? How did you set sort of the, the, the RPO and RTO? Just sort of gut feel it? Did you talk to the business? Yeah, I mean, it was really one of those things where the owner of the company sat me down with management and said, I had a dream last night that the building burned down. I'm not kidding, that's, that's how this started. And so we sat in the room and determined that a um, RPO, RTO, that was very small, so we did have continuous data protection. That's what he wanted, and he was willing to you know, spend the money to do that and to make it happen, and so we did. We've accomplished a RPO of about 15 to 30 minutes and an RTO of less than really five. Really? By utilizing Site Recovery Manager and RecoverPoint, you click a button and things happen. Yeah, so, so those conversations are always interesting. It starts with like how much data are you willing to lose, and the business person says, what? None. Well, it's, you know, mm -hmm. and then you figure out how expensive that's going to be. Right. So, okay, so have you had to do a recovery? 
I have not had to do a recovery. Thankfully, we've not had a disaster. But I have been able to use the Recover Point technology to actually move VMs from the colo facility to the primary facility. So we did, used to have a split sort of data center. We had some live in one place and the rest live in primary. So I actually used Recover Point one Friday afternoon and moved six servers over. 15 minutes later, it was all done and I could go home. Cool. So Philip, my understanding is also you, you've really deployed a private cloud now. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through your move from just generally being virtualized on the server and desktop to, to private cloud and, and what those differences are in the management that you use for sure. it? Sure, I mean I think the management is the real key there because we've not added that IT staff. So there's no extra burden on me um, or our service providers to provide this, you know, this high uptime availability of the of the system. So you know the next things that we're looking at is hybrid service, you know, or some cloud-based DR plan, is that what's going to be next in our future? And maybe. Okay. But we really also don't need that automation because we're a small medium business. I maybe spend one or two VMs up uh, you know a year, but it's so, not really something so we're taking. What, what what tools are you using from the management side? Yeah, definitely using you know v, vSphere and I'm using the EMC plugins for vSphere and that's huge. Okay. Not um, not vCloud Director nope. or, or any of the uh, the pieces. Are you looking at things like vCloud hybrid services? Uh, from VMware? You know, I think um, once those services become compliant, we have to abide by the PCI compliance and we're looking at federal government compliance. You know, once those pieces are compliant, then sure, that makes sense to, to use that and at least explore it. Um, you asked what services we're using, and I'm also looking heavily, based on the conversations that I've had in some sessions here at VMworld, looking at the compliance suite that VMworld's been working on, the operations management suite, that seems to have some real value for our business. So you guys are growing pretty fast. We um, are. Yeah, that, that, that's always a challenge. Um, so, how about uh, things like Flash? Where does, where does it, we talk about all the time in theCUBE, how Flash is totally disrupting the you know, traditional spinning disk mm -hmm. business. What's your experience been with Flash, and, uh, and how are you using it? Are you using any kind of you know, data migration, uh, you know, fa EMC's fast, or any kind of similar tools? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so we decided to do the Flash first technology with EMC. So we don't. We have about 27 terabytes of data, which is you know small, um, but compared to some other companies, but it's still a significant amount of data. So we we are using the fast technology with the uh, the tiers of storage. So we've got the flash, we've got the SAS drives, we've got the SATA drives, um, and that's for our servers environment, and that's perfect. We don't have any latency on SQL or SharePoint or email. It's just it just flies and it screams. And but for view desktops for the replicas, we're using just a set. Um, set of solid state drives. So we may have about 10 flash drives out of the 28 terabytes, which is about six racks of drives. Okay, so it's, it's not overwhelming, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not, not insignificant either. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, you've eliminated your boot storms for your VDI, mm -hmm. um, and, and when you said it's, it screams, you know, you're happy with the performance, can you, can you quantify that a little bit or talk about how do you, you know, compare that? You compare it to what, what it was before, um, how do you measure it? So the nature of our business, it is a, um, I, lost the, uh, I lost the word, um, collect, you know, we, we work in collections, so whatever the agent is able to do, that's what's going to directly. Breaking thumbs, basically. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so they're, you know, that's what they're going to bring home. So right. if someone can't work, then they're not going to be able to bring home their commission, right? Commission is the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, oh, so that's key. So it, it is key. Yeah. So you know, we were always under the you know, strategy to not replace desktops every three years. We didn't really see it as um, something that we were going to do so to keep our commissions higher, right, and attract a higher um, caliber of employee. So we started ripping out old desktops and putting in virtual desktops. And when someone gets a brand new desktop every day and they're ready to go in a minute, compared to 15 minutes the day before with maybe a three or four year old regular PC or even some that are you know, less old than that, uh, it makes the employee really happy. Yeah. A happy are, employee that can get on the phone are, and make are, money are is you, happy for me. Are, so you're able to replicate the, 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 the laptop or desktop experience now with, mm -hmm. with your virtual desktop, is that right? Right, and we have to be fully compliant too. So our salespeople that are traveling are accessing their virtual desktop in the data center through their iPad with the RSA two-factor authentication all integrated into one, so, that, so we're solving the compliance problem too. So that day has come where you can, mm -hmm. you can replicate that experience. There's yeah. not, you're not getting complaints. It used to be like the graphics weren't as good, or right. performance wasn't as good, you just, it was a little off. You know, there were some conveniences, but it wasn't the same experience. No, we've even got our marketing person on the virtual desktop as well. So the users don't even really know. No, I mean, I mean other than the good things, the benefits right. that they, they got. They know the benefits. So what, what were the benefits to the organization? 
I mean, um, uh, other than the user pieces, I mean, overall, you know, the infrastructure, we're able to cut costs, or, go ahead. Right, I mean, I think it's made there. our business more agile. We're looking at some new markets to grow into, as any business does, mm -hmm. and we don't re really even have to question our compute infrastructure or our data center infrastructure, because we know if it's desktop or server expansion, we don't really need to worry about it. So I can help business focus on the operational goals for the new market strategies, instead of having to worry about what, how many desktops and provisioning and all that kind of thing. How do you, I mean, I imagine a, you know, like a lot of IT practitioners, you got, you're getting pulled in on many different directions. Mm -hmm. You got to keep costs down, right? You got to make sure you don't lose data. Your, you know, you got your DR initiative and, and other just high availability requirements. So don't spend money, but make sure we never go down. And oh, by the way, we need to, we're growing really fast right. and we need to be agile and offering new services. And, you know, our sales guys need to get their commissions and they need access to their data, so speed is, is key. Those are sometimes conflicting objectives, but Definitely. they're your objectives, that's how right. you get measured. How do you, how do you manage those conflicting objectives? Um, I think always doing your research is, is super key, so I'm out always looking for the new solution that's going to solve multiple problems at once. That's why we don't really have a compliance you know, management suite right now, because I'm still looking for what's going to be the best option for us out there. Mm -hmm. So constantly doing research mm -hmm. and allowing the technology to work so I don't have to worry about the day-to-day -day technology has really been what's helped me to help the business grow. How do you do that research? I mean, obviously the web, you go to conferences, but do you have a particular approach or method that you can share? Yeah, I mean, I think as an IT staff person, it's really key to go to conferences, talk to other people, go to the user groups. They're in almost every major metropolitan area and just talk and see what other people are doing. And of course, don't forget about social media. I learn a lot just by following people and keeping up with the com community in general on social media. Yeah, hey Philip, uh, you know, when I look at the architecture that you have, you've got a lot of the pieces that would put together from EMC, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, you know, it's the, uh, the converged infrastructure, like the V-Block or more, more the more reference architecture. Can you, did you look at those, and especially if you look at something like VDI, you know, how, how was it to put together the pieces, and how, how did you reach the solution which wasn't a converged solution on your side? Right, I mean, I think uh, by, lo by looking with the EMC solution with VMware, you see a lot of integration, and that's something that you don't necessarily see with other vendors, at, at least when we were doing this two years ago. Things have definitely changed since then, but it's really the best solution that solves lot, lots of our problems. So I can mix VDI with disaster recovery, and it's you know just all kind of one tight net solution. Yeah, okay, so it, it sounds like maybe you might have fit in like a V-Specs, but that didn't exist two years ago. Right. Okay. Right. Philip, I was just checking out your LinkedIn profile. I see you got, you're on there with Pat Gelsinger, and uh, <laughs> Pat, who's also a Cube alum now. So you're a Cube alum, you're in the club. Oh, nice. <laughs> you're in the inner circle. Nice. But, um, so talk about your relationship with, with, with EMC. Obviously, you're, you're a fan. Uh, why, what makes EMC so great? EMC has never really failed us from a service of support or new product delivery options. So if there's something that I need that's gone wrong with the system, then EMC is normally proactively telling me that there's a problem before I even know it. I've got someone replacing it, and that, their support has never failed us, and I can't say that about all of our, the tech vendors that we've had to deal with before. Um, but EMC has also got a, a wide array of solutions for any business size, and I think that that's really what's uh, helped us work with EMC, is we found exactly what we needed. So it's, it's, the, it's the service and support, the high touch capability. Right. I mean, EMC is renowned for that. Um, uh, 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 thinking about how, how many vendors do you manage? Mm -hmm. Dozens? Mm -hmm. We've got about 25, 35 yeah. vendors. Yeah. Where would you put EMC in the spectrum of, of quality? I mean, they're definitely right at the top. Yeah. The best? One I would the best? say so. You would say they're the best? I would say they're the best from the service support tech offerings. Uh -huh. They're really probably the best what, vendor we so, use. So maybe this, okay, but so, I always ask this, what's on their to-do list? What could they do, I mean, even though they're up toward the top, what could they do to make your life better? Um, how about put a free network engineer in the office to do some stuff I don't want to do? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send me a bag of money. That's right, yeah. you know, a small bag of money's never a problem. <laughs> awesome. yeah. so, Philip, a quick question, we're talking about vendors, you know, there's some discussion out there, kind of the relationships of, you know, Cisco with VMware and EMC, does right. that hit your radar? Is that something you look at? You know, it's something to talk about, it's gossip, so to speak, but um, really we what love it gossip comes, on the queue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it comes down to is who's providing the right solutions and who's working with each other. So, you know, whoever's that, whoever's providing that, then you know that's all that matters to me. All right, Philip. Thanks very much for coming on the cube. It was thank a pleasure you. meeting you. Good luck with everything, and Appreciate congratulations it. on your success. Uh, keep trucking and uh, and balancing. <laughs> all right, all right keep it right there. Thanks, Stu, for sitting in.
We'll be right back with our next guest. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're live from VMworld 2013. We'll be right back.